I had always been looking for myself in scripture. What are the promises? What are the things I can cling to to back God into a corner? How can I please God? How can I be a good Christian? Mm. And to read it, to understand who he is, that was my aha moment. Because I go back to the context and I say, here's your verse, okay, but what's going on above that verse? What's going on below that verse? Oh, yes, oh, wow, you're so smart. I'm not smart, I just read the passage. Okay, so the rule here is, and this is the most important thing that I could ever teach any other brother or sister in Christ, to help them be a better Christian, to follow Christ better. I love the Bible. I love to wake up early in the morning and read it or read a devotional that is commentary on specific Bible verses. And I, I can't wait to hear your favorite how-tos on Bible study. But, but I have to ask you to get us started. Uh, what got you so interested in the Bible? I mean, did you grow up going to church? Were you, uh, you know, the contestant on the Bible Bee? Were you the Awana uh, <laughs> Bible memory quiz gold star winner? I do love some Awana. I did grow up in church. My family was a big church three times a week, private Christian school. My family owned a Christian bookstore. So very early on, I was steeped in the word. But spoiler alert, I didn't value it that much. So that was um, one of the problems that I think a lot of us who've grown up in church have been challenged by is our lives have been saturated in this thing that we go, okay, I know that's true, know but how does that impact me? Why should I care? That's right. I know people yeah. who, who, who live in Hawaii and they don't understand the amazing place that they live in. We do because we're not there. <laughs> we go there and now we're on this, this beautiful uh, vacation holiday. And to them, it's just kind of normal. Nah. And, and that can be what right. it was like for people who grow up with the Bible every day. So what was your aha moment? What, what, what caused you to sit, the lights to go on? Well, I had, I went into full-time ministry right out of college and I was in full-time ministry and mostly like I was doing some speaking, some writing, things like that. And a pastor friend of mine pulled me aside after an event one night and said, um, Terry, have you read the whole Bible? And I said, I'm sure I've pieced it together over the years, you know, like all the church I just mentioned, selling Christian books, things like that. And he said, I think you should read the whole thing. You read it probably read order. it all. Not front to back, <laughs> right? Yeah. And he said, uh, read it in or the order that it happened. Read it chronologically so you get the storyline of what's happening. And he said, you can read the whole thing in 12 minutes a day. And Kirk, my first thought was, I don't want to. I've tried. It's confusing. Parts of it are boring. I don't understand how it applies to me. I want to just dwell in these parts that I know really well, that I feel like I understand the, the good parts and not have to deal with those confusing hard parts. I don't want to read the whole thing. But he offered to answer my questions along the way. And so I would, about once a week, I would have two to three hours worth of questions that he started filling me in on things. I was reading things I'd never read, seeing things I'd never seen, understanding things I'd never understood. And like the, the hard part of the story is I got to the end of it the first time I read through and I didn't like God. I didn't like what I was seeing. And that was heartbreaking. I'm in full-time ministry. This is all I've ever known. And the hardest part was I knew it was true. Like I knew it was true. And so now this is who God really is. And I don't like him. What do I do about that? Uh. So I'm confessing all this to my pastor friend. And he says to me, okay, I have a new challenge for you. Read it again. And this time, stop looking for yourself and start looking for God. What does he love? What does he hate? What motivates him to do what he does? So I was reading through and halfway through the Old Testament, I, I fell in love with him. Like I just, it transformed everything to have this whole new lens to read scripture through. I had always been looking for myself in scripture. What are the promises? What are the things I can cling to to back God into a corner? How can I please God? How can I be a good Christian? Uh. And to read it, to understand who he is, that was my aha moment. What, what's the best way to read the Bible? Do you think reading through the whole thing in a year is good? That's kind of speed reading in my thought, even though it's 12 minutes a day. But then there's other pastors who say, no, why don't you camp out on the book of John for a year? Then you'll really know it. You know, uh, so there's expository pastors who will do that verse by verse. Uh, do you find them both acceptable and helpful or is one better than the other? Oh, wow. I think there's merit to any time in God's word. I will not discourage anybody from whatever the Lord has called them to as far as Bible study. I will distinguish Bible study and Bible reading. Okay. Those to me are two different things. Okay. And 
the pastor who uh, challenged me to read through scripture, he said the first time he did it, he did it in like 90 days. He said he was carrying a little pocket Bible with him, reading it at stoplights, reading it in elevators, reading it when he's standing in line at the grocery store oh. to just get the meta narrative, that overarching storyline. Yeah. And so what I found is that as you're reading that overarching storyline, there are places you really want to dig in. Yeah. So I usually have, I carve out some time on the weekend where I can dive in deeper to the questions I have, the things I want to study further, but I keep that daily reading in place. And again, 12 minutes a day, that's commercial breaks on your favorite show. Like you've got that time. And especially with the auditory option for us to say that we don't have that time is a bit, for most people, it's a bit of, of, of a, an untruth that we don't have the time. Right. And um, I love getting tools to help me understand what I'm reading. Some, some, there are free study Bibles online, things like that. You don't even have to spend any money. The Bible Recap is free podcast, free YouTube. You can do that for free. Um, get some tools to help you understand. But I love the idea of doing Bible reading and Bible study as separate things. Yeah, that, that, that's so true because once we understand the big story, now we know where some of these doctrines drop into the story and why, the, why they're important. And then we can study those things. And uh, I grew up going to a, a church when I was 18, went to a church where we studied one verse at a time practically every Sunday. And I didn't have the big picture story of what was going on. Uh, so I, I agree with you. Both of those things are super important. Now, Terry, what about the portions of Scripture that are not so easy to understand? You know, like we drop into Leviticus. What do we do there? You know, and, and stuff like don't boil a goat in its mother's milk. I mean, where do I find the God shot in, in verses like that? <laughs> right. Um, so I think in those passages, a couple things that are helpful to remember is if you're reading chronologically, you have the context for that. We don't, tr like, I spend a lot of my life just opening my Bible in the morning and going, God, help me find the verse that you want to speak to me through, put my finger down, like Bible roulette. And, you know, half the time it was really what I needed to hear. And half the time I was like, I don't understand this at all. Nothing else in my life did I treat that way. No other books did I treat that way. I don't treat a movie that way. I don't drop into it for five minutes and expect to understand the plot or it, even the scene I'm watching. And I definitely don't expect to fall in love with the main character if I'm just dropping into the movie for five minutes wherever I want. And so I think reading it chronologically, which is, again, not front to back, but in the order it, the story happened, uh, and you don't even need a chronological Bible for that. If you do the Bible recap, or even if you just want to use our reading plan, it's free. You can print out the reading plan. It'll tell you where to go. Um, but you get the idea of how the story unfolds, and that helps you look for the character of God because you see what happened before it that prompts him to say what he's saying in that moment. And one of the things I love most, you know, the Psalms, it's this beautiful book of poetry and worship and lament and confession. And when you're reading chronologically, you go read the story of David and the atrocities that he committed against Uriah and Bathsheba. And then you go to the Psalms and you read the Psalm of Repentance yes. that he wrote. You see how those Psalms tie into the storyline. And so you're not only getting more of like, why did God do what he just did? Why did he kill those people? Why did he, what did he do? I don't understand. You get that but you also get everybody else in scripture. You understand them a little better too. That is yeah. so good to have the context of the whole story to really understand the character of God. Uh, mm -hmm. Tara Lee, what, what are the benefits of reading the Bible together with others in a group? Oh, I love that. I, one of the things I love about it is you get a few different lenses and viewpoints on things. So like I mentioned, I'm, I'm single. But when I study it with people who are married, they're able to speak into aspects of scripture that maybe wouldn't have jumped out at me. They're able to relate in different ways. Maybe they're able to correct some of my thinking on things. I learn from them. And one of the things I, you know, Kirk, I've read, I think I'm on my 15th trip through the Bible right now. And um, I just still keep learning stuff. There's still so much for me to learn about who God is. And if I can have other voices speaking into that as well, and we can like look at a study Bible, we can, we can have those conversations. This is what people in the, the ancient Jewish communities would do. They would open the Torah, unroll the scroll. They would read the text aloud, and then they would discuss it. And I love that, that group discussion. And plus, there's an accountability element in that that's really fun, um, that really keeps you reading, keeps you engaged. Greg, let's talk a little bit about studying the Bible yeah. so that we can understand what it means by what it says. One of the things that you're always reminding your students is uh, never read a Bible verse. Yeah, that's right. What, what do you mean by that? This is the number one rule, and I'm telling you, if more people 
would follow that rule, which I'll explain in a moment, uh, I'd be kind of out of a job. People would be calling me on the air on my own show now, 33 years, asking me questions about the Bible because I go back to the context and I say, here's your verse, okay, but what's going on above that verse? What's going on below that verse? Oh, yes, oh, wow, you're so smart. I'm not smart, I just read the passage. Okay, so the rule here is, and this is the most important thing that I could ever teach any other brother or sister in Christ to help them be a better Christian, to follow Christ better. Go to the Word. We have to, we have, to have our food, right? We have to have, be reminded of what reality is like, and that's what the Scripture tells us, what the world is really like. And, uh, and then we follow this rule, never read a Bible verse. That is, if you want to know what a verse means, you can't just read the verse. You've got to read the paragraph at least, and sometimes even a book, okay, uh, or a chapter, or, you know, you understand how the whole thing is working right. together. In fact, even in, if somebody tuned into this show and just caught one line from you or from me, they'd be lost. And they might misunderstand what we're saying because they're missing the rest of the conversation. We come out of church. There are people gathering around with each other, they're chit-chatting. We hear something that piques our curiosity. And we ask a question of the group because we heard this thing that caught our attention. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what are you talking about? And that's the question you should always ask every single time you go to the Bible. This is a fresh new approach to reading the Bible for some of us because um, there's another way to read the Bible which is looking at it as a frequently asked questions about God answer book. Mm -hmm. You know, why is there evil in the world? Uh, who am I? Why am I here? Right. And al almost like we could just have, you know, categories and, you know, mm -hmm. look up in the index answers right. to your questions. Right. Right. But what you're saying is, understand the whole story and we actually learn not just about the answers to our questions but we learn about who God is That's right. and what he's doing throughout this whole story yeah. that is there a bigger purpose than just me getting to heaven yeah. is there uh, uh, relationships and there's covenants sure. and there's all sorts of promises yeah. fulfilled yeah. does that help us want to read the Bible more? Well I hope so and uh, what you first described was more like an encyclopedic approach. You look up the right thing and then you find the, the answer regarding that. And there's a place for that because people have challenges and they have questions. But it isn't an encyclopedia. It's, a, it's more like a novel. This is why I use the metaphor of story because it, it has a beginning. It has an end. There's a plot line to it. There are steps as we move through the, the story. We have, we have an introductory material in the beginning and then chapter three we have the conflict introduced. Yeah. And you know just from your film work and all this other, unless you have conflict you don't have a story, right? Because most of the story is how the conflict is resolved. Yeah. Okay, and then you have the ending where it's resolved and the denouement and every, everybody lives happily ever after kind of thing. Okay, we are in the middle of our story. And if we don't understand that there is a story playing itself out here what we're not going to make sense of is the hardship and difficulty and suffering that every single Christian yep. goes through in his life because we are strangers in a strange land, you know. We are, we are in a certain sense, behind enemy lines. Now, we're not treating people like enemies, but we understand there's a spiritual warfare. And when you see the bigger picture, you realize that we are moving, we are not, we, we, as C.S. Lewis puts it, if we were to be honest with ourselves, we'd realize that what we are looking for is not to be had in this world. Okay, this is just the introduction to eternity and we have a job to do here. When people tr treat this as the whole thing, which is mm. the secular world, it can be really disappointing and frustrating, especially if you're a follower of Christ getting a lot of pushback from the world. But if you realize that this life where you're getting the pushback by being faithful to Christ is just a very small sliver of eternity. That's right. And you're being prepared, as, as J.P. Moreland, one of my mentors, the philosopher, said, you know, we are being prepared to be fit to spend eternity with God. This is a preparation. Physical exercise profits little, okay? Pumping iron, all that. But godliness is a means of great gain for it holds a promise not just for this life, but also for the life to come. That's 1 Timothy chapter somewhere, but 1 Timothy Paul says that. And so there you get perspective. And it's that kind of perspective, understanding the story of this life being part of eternity and being prepared for eternity that helps me deal with the hardships that I go through just like everybody else, the disappointments, the suffering, the, the downturns, the, all of that. 
that helps me go forward. I've got Christ, and I know that four score and ten is not the whole thing. This is preparation for the future, and I'm laying up as best I can treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys nor thief can break in and steal.